Hello. It is me, Andreen, your Jewish American priestess, here for your post Yom Kippur break fast Hebrew reading. And get this candle lit. Not with that match. Okay, let's try. I hope that you had a meaningful holiday, however that presented itself for you this year. I have a little bit of a headache post fast. And that is all right. I'm here now, and I would love to do a reading for this upcoming Shabbat that is coming up right now as we head into our post Yom Kippur pre Sukkot time. Uh, tomorrow we'll start building our Sukkah. And I hope that you can find a beautiful outdoor place for your dining pleasure in this coming week. Sukkot begins on Sunday night. In the meantime, let's see what's coming up for this weekend for everyone who is watching today. Um, I would love to do a couple of readings, and I haven't chosen any specific objects today, so I'm going to reach into my bowl of other Hebrews and choose uh, two different Hebrews for you to choose from for your primary reading. So here's that bowl. One, it is the Tet, and here's the second one, it is the Vav. And just as a general reminder, the Tet is a vessel, like a cup or a basket. If that resonates with you, you'll have reading number one, and this is the Vav. A tall, straight person with a slightly bowed head. And that is for those of you who choose the reading number two. So take a moment to see which one of those two letters resonates with you. And we'll do a reading with a different set of Hebrews corresponding to one of those two choices. We're going to start with the tet. So, for those of you who chose the tet, this vessel or basket, this will be your reading for today, or for this upcoming weekend. I'm going to pull this in a little closer so you can see the letters as they come out. All right. The central issue for you coming up for this upcoming weekend is the letter Zion. And the issue that's come up just before Zion is the letter Tet. <laughs> nice. Uh, the subject that's going to help you through this particular period is the letter pay and that which we need to be mindful of is the letter kuf.
And then what's coming next will be the letter Vav. Interesting. I got both the Tet and the Vav in this reading. All right, we'll start with this. So the central issue that we have in this reading is the letter Zayin. And Zayin is the letter that represents the Shabbat bride. It is the number seven, so it represents the Shabbat, the, day, the completion of creation, and the day that we rest. Uh, we just came through Yom Kippur, which is known as Shabbat Shabbaton, the the most Shabbat of all Shabbats, the the stopping of all stopping times. And the Zion represents the sword and the scepter, so it has to do with sovereignty. And this month that we're in right now, the month of Tishrei, is about the Gevira, the the queen. Um, and so uh, here we have this, this representation of sovereignty, which is both a sword and a scepter. And the power that comes with that, as well as perhaps the compassion that comes with that. And Zayin is sort of a vav with a with a crown on it. Uh, and again, like I said, it represents the Shabbat bride, the feminine part of the partnership that rules over or tempers the masculine energy within that partnership. Uh, the number seven has all kinds of magical associations with it. it. It has to do with, this, of course, the seven days of the week, the seven days of creation, and the Shemitah year, which we just ended, which is a seven-year cycle, so we're beginning again. This is year one as we move toward the next Shemitah cycle. And it has to do with the, the weeks that we count during the Omer before Shavuot, and also the seven Ushpizin, who will be inviting into our sukkahs in the coming week. And the sukkah is the little dwelling that we build outside in the autumn after Yom Kippur, in which we dine and dwell, if we desire, for seven days, eight days in the diaspora. So, in during each of those days, we invite in one of the ancestors, and traditionally those are the male ancestors, although more contemporary folks also invite a feminine ancestor in. But those seven Ushpizin, the invited guests, are Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aharon, David, and Yosef. So Zayin has to do with all those things, so it speaks to the completion cycle of creation, which we just went through. Uh, at the beginning of the new year. It speaks to Shabbat, which is coming up uh, this weekend after Yom Kippur. And it speaks to um, Sukkot, which is coming up uh, at the end of this weekend. So, uh, and the power and the, um, the sword and the scepter of the sovereignty that is this month of Gevira, the sovereign matriarch. So that's what's up right now. And what came right before that is the letter Tet, which is the letter that is um, also the subject of your reading. So Tet is a vessel, as I said. It's a it's the number nine in Gematria. It's the ninth letter of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, and so it represents um, gestation, like the womb, like the nine months of gestation. And so something is it was gestating just before now and and it also is the first letter of the word tov which means good so something good was gestating and now we've come into this power as we've come through uh rosh hashanah and yom kippur the number nine also refers to the shofar the number of beats that the tekiyas held is nine and the number of bursts in the truah is nine and they come in sets of nine on Rosh Hashanah and we just have the tekiyah gadola which is the biggest tekiyah of the shofar at the end of Rosh Hashanah uh, I'm sorry at the end of Yom Kippur as those gates swing close 
It also has to do with the month of Av that happened in the past. And it has just has to do with the renewal, the renewal that comes with Rosh Hashanah. So again, we've just come through this time of gestation and container of the High Holidays, and now we are in this time of power and sovereignty. And what is going to help us right now as we are in this time of power is the letter Pei. And Pei, uh, that's what's above here. Pei is a mouth. Um, you can see that it kind of looks like a mouth speaking. It is representation of the mouth of the divine speaking uh, creation into being. So it has to do with communication and speech um, and the creation with the use of words. And we do create the world as we speak. We, we create our reality with our words and our voices. We can use them to heal and we can use them to wound. And ideally, as we've come through Yom Kippur, we've made amends to those people who we have wronged with our words and have chosen to use our words wisely in the future. We create our world as we speak. And speech is one of the things that separates us from other species. We have the ability to speak. So what's going to help us right now inside this time uh, of, of power is using our power of speech for good. We use our communication well. Pei also rules over the day Wednesday, which was the day of Yom Kippur. Uh, and so if that resonates, um, we have that, the power to speak, the power to ask for forgiveness as we went through Yom Kippur. And we still have those times. So, you know, the gates are continuing to be open through Sukkot now. So if we have other amends that we've failed to make, maybe this is a good time to use that power to make those amends. And what may not be helping us at this time is the letter Kuf. And Kuf is uh, the letter that is representative of uh, Kodesh or Kadosh, holiness. When I say it's not going to help us, is it when it's on the lower line like this, it may be representative of some kind of fear we have. So maybe we're still afraid that we haven't achieved holiness, that um, we do not have the kadosh that we need or want or require uh, at this time, even though we've come through Rosh Hashanah. And, um, but, but Kuf also um, is representative of, uh, of, a, of a secret. So some say that it looks like a a zayin and a resh, which rep which spells the word uh, raz, which means secret. So maybe there's some inner secrets that we are still hiding, things we haven't um, atoned for, perhaps, or something that we failed to confess during Yom Kippur. And if that's the case, then we need to move back up here and speak those speak those things that are true for us right now in order to capture and regain our power. Uh, if we find ourselves being afraid that we do not have the holiness that we seek or the righteousness that we wish we had, then we need to move back up here to what's going to help us, which is that power of speech, that ability to speak our truth and to confess, if we need to confess, what needs to be confessed. And if we do that, it will bring us forward to the Vav. And the Vav here in the future, in your future, is the um, standing person with a bowed head. So it has to do with humility, but it also has to do with connection. It's a it's this tall, straight, uh, connecting letter. It is literally the word and in Hebrew. And it represents connecting the heavens and the earth, the, the sky and the ground. It's also penetrating like a taproot 
into the ground so that one can stand strong. And it has to do with um, the, the foundation of hearing in the Sefer Yitzira, the Book of Creation, each of the letters is paired with a uh, different foundation and, and Vav is about hearing. So maybe we're moving into a time where we can better hear after we've spoken. We can move into a time of listening and hearing and connection because it really is about connecting both divine and humans and with each other. And it also represents those pegs or hooks that connect the curtains around the veil of the Holy of Holies. It is the third letter in the divine name, the yud He vav He, and it is the thing that connects presence of the He to presence of the other He. So it's about being connecting uh, both within the divine and to the divine. So and, and because it's the number six, it has to do with that, um, again, creation, uh, the completion of a creation. Uh, this is how we finish creating before the seventh day where Zion came in. So as we're standing in our power right now, having come through Yom Kippur, having just passed through this gestation period, uh, we need to reach above to the pay, which will allow us to speak our truth, to um, say what needs to be said. And pay also is the number 80 in Gamatria, which represents infinite, the ultimate infinity. Eight, eight being one more than seven, seven being the days of creation. Eight on its side is an infinity symbol, and ten times eight is just the ultimate manifestation of that infinite. So reach up toward infinity, reach up toward the infinite and the ability to speak and to create your world as you speak. And if we're concerned about possibly uh, a lack of holiness of Kadosh or that we haven't, we've kept some kind of secret that we haven't um, confessed, then it's time to move back up here to speaking, speaking the truth and um, relying on the infinite. And that will bring us into this period of connection as we move into the first Shabbat of uh, after Yom Kippur and just before Sukkot, when we have um, those Ushbizin to invite in, those, those seven different ancestors to bring into our uh, our fort out in the yard where we're having our, our dinner for a week. So for those of you who chose the Tet as your letter tonight, that is your reading for this first weekend after Yom Kippur. For those of you who chose the Vav, this letter that means connection, this is your reading for that first Shabbat weekend after Yom Kippur and before Sukkot. And first I'm going to pull out what seems to be the central issue right now. And that is the letter Dalit. Next I'll pull out what is the issue that's come right before now. And for that I get the letter Tet. Interesting. And what is going to assist us in this time period? I have the letter Nun. 
and what is not going to be assisting us or maybe causing some concern at this time. I have the letter Olive. And what's coming up next? We have the letter Ayn. Okay. So our central issue is Dalit. And Dalit is the doorway or the gate. And we've just come through this period of Yom Kippur where the gates have been open and uh, we had the ability to call out to heaven with our concerns, our confessions, and hope that we'd be written in the Book of Life. And that is kind of represents uh, what Dalit is about. Dalit is this gate or this doorway. But it has to do with humbleness and humility, not unlike the Vav, which has this slightly bowed head. So Dalit is about um, yeah, remaining humble as we go through the gate. It is about the four directions and the four seasons. And it is the number four. So it has to do with earth, air, fire, and water, and summer, fall, autumn, and spring. And we've just crossed that threshold between summer and autumn. Uh, it has to do with the four mothers, the Sarah, uh, Rivka, Leah, and Rebecca, and the four name, four letters in the name of God, the Yud He and Vav He. And it is one of the double letters, and it represents the binary of wisdom and foolishness. So we are in this period of time where we've just come through, the, ideally, the holiest rest day of the year. And now we have to decide, are we going to hold on to uh, those commitments that we have made and release the commitments we've released so that we can move into this year with a clean slate? And are we going to be wise or are we going to be foolish? Are we going to walk through that gate with humility and wisdom? And that's the big issue that's up right now. And what's come right before is the Tet. And I say interesting because we had the Tet uh, as the topic of the, of the first reading, and also it was in the same position in that reading. So uh, we had this period of gestation, it came just before now. This is a representative of a vessel or a basket of uh, some kind or a womb. And it is the number nine, so it represents the nine months of gestation in the human. And the, and the word tov, which means good. So we had some gestation. We had some hopefully good gestation as we just came through the high holidays. Um, and it, it was good. Uh, we had those um, nine staccato blasts in the tekia, or sorry, the trua, and the nine beats of the tekia, and the nine sets of blasts in each of those uh, shofar blasts during Rosh Hashanah. And so it all has to do with being renewed, being born um, fresh into the new year. And that gestation period that came just before now is what we had just prior to this gateway here. And what is going to be assisting us right now in this mm, period of going through that gate or having just passed through that gate is the letter Nun. And Nun is about humility. It's about um, the Neman, the, the faithful servant who uh, you know kneels and bows down to the master, and I believe that could be our inner, uh, our, our outer self bowing down to the neshama, the breath, the spirit within each of us. Um, it is, yeah, about um, it, it is about the. Uh, foundation of locomotion, so not just movement, but actual um, 
locomotion being something that is ongoing and um, regular and and generative. So um, this idea of service and humility, not humiliation, but humbleness and a dedication uh, that that is represented by locomotion is the thing that's going to help us now. Being dedicated to what we're doing and really focusing on it and committing ourselves to whatever service seems appropriate now. And that's uh, what's going to assist us right now is this nun, this idea of humility. Again, Dalit has to do with humility as well as Vav with the bowed head. So we've got three forms of humility in a row right here in your reading. And what is going to is the Hebrew of concern is Aleph, and Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. It is the letter that represents the connection between heaven and earth. You've got the Yud above and the Yud below, and again a Vav right in the center, uh, separating and connecting both of those uh, elements. So with it being on the lower line, maybe there's a fear concerned about whether there is a connection between heaven and earth, between a d divinity and us. And it is the number one, so it's about unity, it's about oneness, it's about the one uh, creator and the one universe. And it has to do with that paradox of multiplicity within unity, all things being one, but there being this plurality of creation that exists. So it is one of the mother letters, and so it has to do with breath and air in the body, uh, which is, say, ch the chest in the body and air in the world, the sky or the atmosphere, let's just say, and it is one of the creation elements of air. So, hmm, it's possible that there may be some issue with breathing. There may be some issue with um, with breath or or spirit, if you want to think of it that way, being able to to breathe freely in uh, in whatever way that makes sense. Or again, that concern about oneness or about connection with the divine that maybe there's some post-high holidays let down and that we had a moment where we felt very humble and very connected and just stating this thing and now we're um, afraid that we're going to lose that connection or that that connection didn't come through as strong as we wished. And if that's the case and you have some concerns about that all of not manifesting in the way we like with spirit or breath or connection with the divine, then we need to bring ourselves back up here to the nun, which is going to help us, that, that idea of humility, that idea of, of being um, dedicated to um, going through the process of whatever it is we need to go through. Uh, in order to find that connection, in order to to you know go through whatever practices one may have established um, to find connection, to find humility in the face of the divine, and that will bring us back to um, to that place, uh, uh, being able to walk through that doorway, being able to walk through that gate. And then once we have walked through that gate, on the other side of it is Ayin. And Ayin is an eye. It's about sight. It's about vision. It's about being able to see clearly. And it's about being watched over by the divine. It is the number 70. So it is an ultimate manifestation of completion or creation. It took seven days for creation to be completed, and 10 times 7 is that ultimate manifestation of creation or completion. 
And there's so many different cycles of 70 in the Torah. There were 70 descendants of Noah. There were 70 souls that went down to Egypt. There were 70 elders in the desert with Moshe and 70 seats on the Sanhedrin as well. And so we have all these different cycles of completion and fulfillment and um, I guess community and connection as well. And so we can we can look forward to that again, literally look looking forward because it is about the eyes, it's about sight, it's about vision. And Ayin also uh, represents the foundation of laughter. So we have this hope uh, as we go through the doorway that we will find not only vision for what's coming in the future, but laughter and joy as we move into Sukkot, as we move into the celebratory time of the harvest, when we welcome in the Ushpizin, when we sit with the ancestors and dine outdoors for this last celebratory time, uh, waving our lulav and etrog, um, as we come in to this, again, celebratory time. So we've got this gateway here. We've come out of a period of gestation. We're holding on to our humility and our dedication of locomotion, mo forward momentum and movement. Um, if we have concerns or fears about mm, not feeling one or disconnected from the one, then we can move our way back up to this idea of humility and dedication and um, service. And that will allow us to pass through this gate. Again, like I said, we've got three representations of the humility here. The Dalit, uh, the Nun, and the Vav, which is that straight, tall person with the slightly bent head. Um, so really focus on humility here right now in this time frame. And that will bring us forward into the period of sight, vision, and laughter. And for those of you who chose the Vav for your reading this night, uh, this is your reading, and I wish you a beautiful Shabbat, and I hope that you're having a great time building your sukkah, and we'll see you on the other side of that.